Good morning, saints. Good morning, friends. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. How many are happy to be back in the house of God once again? Hallelujah. Has he been good to anybody on this morning, on this week? Can you testify to his goodness? Can you testify to his grace and to his mercy and all that he has done? We are just grateful and thankful to be here once again for all of my saints and friends, wherever you are. If you have your palms, come on, wave your palms. Come on, wave your palms. It is Palm Sunday on this morning. It is Palm Sunday. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of our salvation. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for allowing us to see another day. Lord, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We know that you are our God. It is you who are not we ourselves. We are your people and the sheep of your pasture. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving. 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 Hallelujah, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father, you have been so good. We thank you for your victorious, a triumphant into this world. We thank you, Lord, for declaring that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we declare this place your holy ground, God. And we thank you that your praise will reside in this place, God. And everything that is said and done will be according to your holy will. So we lift up holy hands. We wave our palms. We say hallelujah because it is the highest praise that we can give. Hallelujah. And we ask that you would accept our praise, accept our worship on this morning. And we'll be careful to give your name the glory, honor, and praise in this precious name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen and amen. Let's lift the praise up to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hallelujah. For those of you who have your Bibles, our morning scripture is in the 21st chapter of Matthew. Twenty-first chapter of Matthew, and we're going to be starting at the fifteenth verse. I am reading from the New International Version, and it reads as thus: But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts. Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, your Lord have called forth your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blessed reading of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be alive? Hallelujah. It's a beautiful day outside. It may be a little chilly, but the sun is shining. Hallelujah. And we have that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel, I, I feel alive today. I feel alive. I feel grateful to be in the land of the living right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's lift up some praise to our God. Hallelujah.
Somebody say, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Come on, say it. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many love him more than anything? I lift.
go to the little bridge here. He said, love me in. Love me in your arms. You are the filter from the start. When all my tears were gone. You are right there on the Come on, testify, saints. Testify. Blessed 
be the rock of my salvation. Come on, praise his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We love you, God. We love you. We love you. And we do say, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. You are the rock of our salvation. All other ground is sinking sand. We love you. And we ask that you would just have your way on today. Heal, set free, and deliver. Receive our praise and receive our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The intercessors are coming right now to take us to another level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Ravel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a sweet spirit in the house. We will start lifting up our prayers this morning and let's keep in our minds our mission our ministry the leaders and members pastors and churches of KFOCI we also like to keep on praying for Bishop and Lady Logan our pastors in this house keep them lifted up because being a pastor, it is a big responsibility in the eyes of our Lord. And they have to take care of us. That's why they were set upon this house. So they can be watching over all of us. The ones that are here and the ones that will be coming here. So let's just keep them lifted up. Also, don't forget Mother Logan and Papa Logan. Let's keep them in our prayers also. Let's pray for the church mothers. Especially this morning, let's keep Mother Fall in our prayers. Um, just just let, let, uh, let's keep her lifted up. And ask the Lord for healing he can do it he can do it also don't forget that Mitchell let's pray for him you know he had a minor stroke of few uh, weeks back so let's just keep it, keep praying for him and the family let's not forget mother hikes She's here this morning with us, but we just need to keep lifting her up that she can keep on coming every Sunday because it is a joy when we come through those doors and see her outside saying good morning to all of us as we come into the house. Let's keep on praying for the gathering of the five and the building vision. And I don't know what's in your hearts, but I would also like to lift up all of your prayer concerns that you have this morning. Let's not forget our sister Patricia, Minister Patricia and her family. Let's keep on lifting her up that even through the storm, Jesus still holding her hand. And just like he did, when the disciples got in that boat and the storm was raging and raging, when they woke him up, all he had to say to the storm was calm down. And there it was. The storm was gone. So I know he's keeping you and holding you by his hand. Amen. So let's go in prayer this morning dear heavenly father we come to your presence today lord 
first of all father we thank you lord we thank you lord for allowing us to be here thank you for giving us another day another week lord i also like to thank you lord for another year it is not every time when i can say thank you lord thank you lord it's been 10 years lord and you're still holding me by your hands and i thank you for that lord I thank you, Lord. I want to lift up, Lord, Mother Falls. Lord, you know her condition. You know what she needs this morning. Just stretch your hand, Lord. Stretch your hand and touch her. Send your angels to minister to her there in that hospital, Lord. Touch her body. Touch her body, Lord. There's nothing that you cannot do. So she can come out of there and be back home as soon as possible, Lord. Heal her kidneys, heal her heart. And just keep her, Lord. Keep her, Lord. Strengthen her, Lord. Keep her husband, Deacon Falls, helping, Lord. Help the family. And be with all of them, Lord, because they surely need you, Lord. Father, Lord, I also like to present to you Mama Logan, asking you, Lord, that you touch that knee, that you help her heal quicker. Even though she's mending very fast, Lord, but there's nothing that you cannot do again, Lord. Just help her heal so she can be up and walking and doing things that she used to, Lord. Keep Father Logan, Papa Logan, Lord, keep his mind, Lord. Keep his mind, cover him, strengthen him, and be with him, Lord. Same as with that Mitchell, Lord. Keep them, Lord. So they can be an example for all of us, Lord. Keep our mothers, Lord. Mother Mitchell, Mother Heights, Mother Logan, Mother Falls, Lord. Keep all of them, Lord. So they can be here in the house with us, Lord, and that we can look up at them, Lord, as examples, Lord for us to follow, Lord, because I want to be just like them, Lord. Be on my 70s and still praising your name. Yes, Lord. I ask you, Lord, for all of the members that are not here today, Lord, that you see, Lord, that you know their needs, you know their reasons. Just stretch your hand if there's anybody sick, Lord. Touch them, heal them, Lord. Give them the strength and the will to keep on going, Lord. And those, Lord, that might be thinking, Lord, of straying away, I just ask you, Lord, that you touch their minds. That you remind them, Lord, the sacrifice that you did in that cross. The sacrifice, Lord, that we are celebrating this week, Lord. Not because we want to celebrate your death, but because we want to celebrate your victory, Lord. And we want to remember, Lord, what you did for us in that cross. We want to remember Jesus that died for us and gave his blood so we could be together with him and the Father, Lord. We just want to remember that victory, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, that all of those that have strayed away, that they can remember that sacrifice this week, Lord. You know them, Lord. I put them in your hands. And I ask you, Lord, that you start bringing them back because the time is near, Lord. And I put all of this in your hands, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I do pray, Lord. Glory to God. And now let's receive our minister in training, Tanya, for our seven thank minutes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hosanna. We thank you, Jesus. We honor you, Father God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you for being God all by yourself, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God. 
that favor is better than silver and gold. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for the hidden treasures, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for dying on the cross for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you take our sins and you hide them from us, Lord. Under the biggest rock, the biggest boulder, we thank you, Father God, for all that you have given us. We thank you, Father God, for our family members, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you keep blessing them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You, your protection over them, Father God, is priceless, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you that you are God that we can pray to, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, in our time of joy in our time of pain, in our time of sickness, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We know, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that we can overcome any and everything, Father God, because of you and who you are, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. So we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for this Palm Sunday, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you for your return, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you, Father God, for dying and then three days later getting up, Father God, with all power in your hand, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you for the authority that you have given to us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that we don't have to be afraid, Lord, in the name of Jesus, because we have you, Father God. You're our keeper, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, through the good and the bad, Father God, through good times and bad times, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you father god that we have what we have because of you lord we thank you father god that we are the lenders and not the borrowers lord in the name of jesus we thank you for the surplus in our home and in this home lord in the name of jesus father god we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us lord in the name of jesus lord because without you father god we are truly nothing lord so we thank you lord for even allowing us to see this day Someone didn't wake up this morning, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We ask you, Father God, to go to the hospitals, Father God, and touch each and everyone who are sick, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Cover Mother Falls, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That's your daughter. That's your daughter, Father God. You know every single thing about her, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. You knew that on this Palm Sunday, Father God, that she would be laying in a hospital bed, Father God, in the name of Jesus. But, Father God, we don't have to fear because, Father God, we know that you are a healer, Lord. By your stripes, she is healed from the corner of her head to the soles of her feet, Father God. Touch her heart, Lord. Touch her kidneys, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. That's your daughter, Father God. You know she knows you. She knows you intimately, Father God. She took the time to know you intimately. You have entered into her, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. So we thank you for the intimate moments that she's had with you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for all that you have done for her, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, healer. Thank you, restorer. Thank you, deliverer. Thank you, God. We thank you, Father God, for who you are and what you have done and what you will continue to do for each and every one of us, Father God. Father God, strengthen us as a whole, Lord. Strengthen us as an individual, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Give us power. Give us dominion, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And we just thank you. We thank you for what's to come, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We trust your word. Your word is true. We thank you for being a God who could, who could not lie and a son of man who shall not go back on his word. If you say it is so. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you for the comfort of knowing that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. When man let us down, Father God, we know that you will always have us, Father God. You will never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. So we hold on to that, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless the mothers. Thank you, Father. I thank you for the wisdom. I thank you for the support that they offer us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the words of encouragement that they instill inside of us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for Bishop and Lady Cece, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the fire that you have put in them for you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for how they build us up, Lord. How they give us assurance to know that, Father God, that we can make it another day, Father God. I thank you, Father God for their sincerity, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for their will 
in the love that they have for your people, Lord, and they have for you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And it overspills to us, and we just thank you, Father God, for what you have put in them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. So, Father God, continue to bless KFCC, Lord. We thank you for the growth, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our wisdom. We thank you for our support, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Because without you, Father God, we are truly nothing, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray for our kids, Lord. Watch over our kids, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the metal detectors that you have put in our schools, Father God, to keep our youth safe, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Continue, Father God, to watch over them, Father God. Give them guidance, Father God. Father God, open doors for them, Lord, so there's support for them, Father God. If there's some mental health, Father God, we know that that is not of you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we just ask you, Father God, to protect them, Lord. We just thank you, Father God, for what we have, Lord, in you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. So our prayer, Lord, is that you continue to keep them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for watching over the students, Father God. We thank you for this break. And we just pray, Father God, over this break that no youth die, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, provide a means of escape for them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And Father God, even if they don't know you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that you're there for them, Father God. You take care of all fools and babies, Father God. These are your God. So give them wisdom, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, so that they know to say no, Father God. They can walk away, Father God. That every, every situation is not always there, Father God, to hurt them, Father God. Is a way of Father God allowing them to know that they, Father God, that they have you. Allow them, Father God, to be able to turn the other cheek, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Father God, for your support. We thank you for freedom, Father God. We pray for the people of Ukraine, Lord. Cover them, Father God. Let there be no more bloodshed, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Father God. We give you all the glory and all the praise, Father God, because you are so worthy of receiving it from your people. We thank you and we give you love honor and glory in the name of jesus amen hallelujah lord thank you for your wisdom thank you jesus hallelujah amen thank you jesus glory hallelujah hallelujah glory to god hallelujah well welcome welcome to all of you that are here in the house this morning like to say welcome also to those that are connected to our live stream and those that will be watching us later on welcome welcome in the name of my bishop bishop jim logan and his lovely wife lady cc logan thank you for being here with us taking your time to worship with us today thank you those of you that are in the house just wave your hand and say hello to those that are here it's nice to see you all glory to god bueno buenos días y gracias gracias por estar aquí con nosotros en esta mañana a ustedes que están conectados a través de nuestro live stream aquellos que están conectados en facebook o nos van a ver luego en el replay en youtube gracias le doy la más cordial bienvenida de parte de mi pastor Bishop Jim Logan y de su hermosa esposa Cici Logan. Estamos localizados en el 2925 de la East Independent Boulevard en Charlotte, Carolina del Norte. Si no tienes un lugar donde congregarte, te invitamos a que vengas y te congregues aquí con nosotros. Nuestros servicios comienzan cada domingo a las 10 de la mañana. Y también tenemos servicio a mitad de semana, los miércoles a las 7 de la noche, donde estamos haciendo un estudio en el libro de James. Así que te damos la más cordial bienvenida y muchas gracias. Glory to God. Glory to God. And now our upcoming events. Join us for coffee every Sunday morning inside the hallway entrance from 9 a.m. to 9.50. You can come and share some coffee with us and donuts. Most of the time we have some available. Thank you to our Deacon Hikes who takes care of that. And um, you can come fellowship, pray with us, and get ready for our service that start at 10 a.m. every Sunday. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Children's ministry, volunteers needed. If you have a heart for kids, if you have a heart to teach kids, you are welcome to be a volunteer with us, equipping kin kids for the future through word, music, and fun every Sunday morning. Please contact Lady Civil Logan at cc253 at gmail.com, and she will gladly talk with you about it. Glory to God. Glory to God. You can follow us on Instagram at Kingdom Fellows, Twitter at Kingdom Fellows 7, and Facebook at kfcc.charlotte. Glory to God. Women's Bible Study. We have been using the U Bible version app. Please search and friend CC 253. Logan to be added to the list and this is hosted by myself if you do not have the app please download it and be part of our Bible studies glory to God and get your KFCC decal today for a donation of three dollars you can see any of our deacons to get one and bef before I move on to the April week of prayer um, I would like to announce that beginning next Saturday at 11 a.m. beginning next Saturday at 11 a.m. we will be coming back to the house for prayer so we will be coming back to the house for prayer every Saturday at 11 a.m. from 11 to 12. And soon we might be announcing about the women's Bible studies when we will be back with those also. And our April week of prayer and fasting begins tonight at midnight. And it runs until Sunday, April 17th. And it ends at 11.59 p.m. Glory to God. If you are not on the list, you can see me or you can also ask Sister Barbara Baker and she can add you to the list. Glory to God. If you miss the live stream, you can find the replays on YouTube. Please look for Bishop Jim Logan's channel. Make sure that you see her fa his face there because there are more than one Jim Logan. And you can find all of the replays for the live streams. And please like, subscribe, and share. Like, subscribe, and share. Glory to God. And that's it for our upcoming events. And let's get ready to receive Bishop Jim Logan. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on, good morning. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we're glad in it. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them, I am glad to be in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. We bless God for you. We're glad to see each and every one of you on this Palm Sunday. This is the beginning of Holy Week as we lead up to Easter. This is a very special time. Amen. Technically, every Sunday is Easter Sunday, but we have one time of year when we celebrate it especially. And I want you to get ready for Easter. I want you to make up your mind that if I don't invite anybody any other time of the year, I'm going to make sure I invite them to come and be with us on Easter. Amen. Amen. We bless God for each and every one of you today. Somebody clap your hands and give God praise just for the joy and the delight of being in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you. you may be seated in the presence 
of a living and an awesome God. Amen. I want to thank those that have made our worship services possible in so many different ways. Uh, Deacon Hikes, uh, Deacon Samuel, amen, Sister Allison, uh, Minister Patricia, and uh, Deacon in Training Ernest, uh, uh, who are so, so faithful in uh, decorating and adorning our worship facilities. Minister in Training Tanya for seven minutes today. Uh, Minister Ruth Tomlin uh, for her leadership today. And of course, our First Lady, Lady Sibyl, we thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for uh, Mother Hikes, who faithfully sits on at the front entryway to welcome people in. If you've never been here in the morning and come in in the morning, uh, she's out there full of joy, singing. You can hear her voice the moment you enter the door downstairs, and we praise God for her. Amen. Amen. You've heard us uh, tell you about Mother Falls, who uh, is in the hospital in Florida. She called and spoke to me this morning, assured me that, that she is doing better, uh, but we want to keep her in our prayers uh, as uh, she is progressing. It's good to see uh, her son that is here today, and I know that he can uh, join us in uh, that report for her, uh, but we thank God for her. Uh, it's, it's always a blessing when she calls me because half the time she calls me uh, she if she's in the hospital or on the way to the hospital or has been sick or something she always calls to reassure me that she's all right and I'm like mother I'm fine how, how are you she's bishop I'm fine I'm fine I just want to let you I'm fine just pray for me and I'm, I'm grateful for that faith uh, that says I will be well amen amen Re remember remember the woman that uh, lost her son that while she was on her way to the man of God she says I shall be well and when she got to the man of God uh, she said I am all is well and I just thank God that that's the attitude that Mother Falls has and that we should have as well it's also a delight to continue to pray for Minister Patricia who is in the midst of her treatments and we just believe that God has already healed and that the treatments that she is undergoing is just a human uh, caution uh, for what God has already done. But we believe God's already done the work of healing, and we bless God for that. You ought to give God some praise for that. Amen. Bless God. Amen. And we want to continue to pray and believe God with her and for her. Amen. Amen. Uh, we just came back this uh, weekend uh, from a wedding of, uh, in our family up in Virginia. We got back last night and uh, it was a marvelous time to, to be with family, but it was also an exhausting time, uh, which is why uh, mom and dad Logan are not able to be here today. That was awful taxing trip to, to do for them, particularly for mom. Continue to pray uh, for her. Uh, continue to pray for all of us. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Well, I don't believe that there's anything that I need to announce other than what has been announced already. I would ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly. Let me encourage you in two ways. Number one, let me remind you that we need to be in place on Sundays at 9 if there is a way that we can have our signs and flags out early uh, next weekend, we want people riding up and down the boulevard to know that we will be here for Easter Sunday. We want to direct them into the place uh, so that we can be prepared for their arrival. Amen? Amen. And we want to be certain to have our leaders here. We don't want anybody, you, you know how we are, uh, still struggling to get people back into worship on a regular basis uh, so you know that if you're if you're late or you're not here it really has an impact upon us so i want to encourage you to be certain that you press your way particularly leaders to be here at nine to make certain that our 
uh, facilities are prepared and ready. Uh, if you are bringing poinsettias, uh, not poinsettias, excuse me, lilies, that's Christmas. If you're bringing uh, lilies, uh, we have plenty that are here now, but we encourage you to bring your own with you and join with what is already here. Thank you for those who have brought them already. And again, thank you for uh, the Howards who have uh, really already adorned us in that regard. We are grateful for your dedication and your commitment. Amen? Amen. It's good to see my daughter is here today. We bless God for her. Amen. Amen. She was very instrumental in, in helping us out this weekend and allowing us to use her truck. So if you were looking for my car and you didn't see me, a, my car, you wondered whether I was here. It's because I'm driving her truck today and she gets it back from us. But we're grateful uh, for that. Amen. And mom is grateful for that. And gave her a great room to stretch out that, that leg that she couldn't bend while we were, we were riding. Amen. So I'm so thankful. It's offering time. Come on, somebody. It's offering time. Amen. We want to offer you the opportunity to bring your tithes and your offerings unto the Lord. Uh, if you are watching by way of live stream, we are so grateful that you tune in every week. There are people who tune in that we have yet to meet. There are people who give that we have yet to meet. We do want you to know we don't take your sacrifice of giving for granted. We are grateful to you. And we have provided you ways that you can give remotely. We use the Givelify app, so you can find us on Givelify as Kingdom Fellowship Christian Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. Be certain that it is exactly that, Charlotte, North Carolina. Kingdom Fellowship Christian Center, Charlotte, North Carolina. You can also give through the secure PayPal portal, and you'll find us the same way. Or you can use the Cash App, and we are listed in Cash App as dollar sign Kingdom Fellows. That's dollar sign Kingdom Fellows. If you are in the room, of course, you can give with your cash or your checks. Uh, Deacon Hikes is in the back. If you need to swipe a card, he can assist you with that. But however you're giving, I release you all now to come and bring your offerings and your tithes. Let's give as unto the Lord. The Lord loves what kind of giver? I said, what kind of giver? Amen. And so we're grateful and we encourage you in your giving. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God has been good to us, hasn't he? Amen. He has been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We give him the honor and the glory and the praise. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're also so grateful for uh, Brother Lavelle and his uh, praise and worship and how he leads us in that area. And uh, want you to continue to pray for, for, them, for him, he and his wife and their family as they continue to serve with us. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Well, somebody clap your hands. Let's get ready to receive the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everybody have their own palm branch? Amen. Now we, we have plenty of palm branches. So if you want to take some with you when you leave today, take some with you. Amen. And share the Palm Sunday cheer with somebody who maybe didn't get a chance to get into church today. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. 
God bless you. Amen. As you as you are standing with your Bibles in your hands, there is one announcement that I did for, forget to make. We do have the dates uh, for Liberia that they want us to be there. Uh, those dates were the, the week of May 23rd. Was that the week? The, the week of May 23rd is when uh, they want to have the women's conference and they're looking for us to be there. So if there are any of you that uh, would like to accompany uh, Lady Sybil and I, uh, we encourage you to go ahead and, and get with us and uh, get yourself prepared for that particular trip. We would love to have you join us uh, for that particular week. Amen? Amen? Boy, that was so enthusiastic. <laughs> I, I felt a bunch of were saying, we'll pray for you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It, it will be a fantastic trip. It will be an eye-opening trip. Literally, an eye-opening trip. Amen. Uh, we're going to look at two passages of Scripture today. We're going to look, first of all, at Matthew chapter 21, two verses, 15 and 16. And then we will look, look at Luke 19, verses 37 through 40. You will want to keep your Bibles open because we will run a little bit of scripture today. I want to talk about a sound that drives the enemy out. A sound that drives the enemy, the devil, out. Amen? So Matthew chapter 21, verses 15 and 16. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he, that's Jesus, had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise for yourself? Go to Luke chapter 19. Luke 19, verses 37 through 40. As soon as he was approaching the Mount of Olives, near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen and shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. Father, may it please you now to pour forth your spirit upon this flesh. Let me preach, not for fame, not for reputation, but to the end that this people might believe. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. Again, I want to talk about a sound. Somebody say a sound. Somebody say a sound. A sound that drives the devil out. As you know, today is that day in the liturgical calendar that is called Palm Sunday. This is the beginning of Holy Week. It's the day when we, as a body of believers, remember how Jesus triumphantly entered Jerusalem, seated upon the foal of a donkey, and his disciples were praising God with shouts of acclamation and by placing palm branches along with their outer garments on the ground before him. This is a story that is not unfamiliar to us. We have heard it over and over again. Uh, for as long as you have been in church, 
you are well familiar with this story that has come down to us over the years. And it is a great story. And as often as I have preached it, and those who have been with me over the years, you know that there comes a time when I don't always preach the liturgical calendar because it, I've just taught and preached it so much over the years. But one of the things that you should understand is that when you read your Bible, and the more you read your Bible, that the Holy Spirit has a way of lifting things out of Holy Writ that have seemingly escaped your notice, or at least have perhaps caused you to gloss by it. And that's the situation that I encountered this week as I was praying about what I would impart to you today that I discovered that in this story there was something that I had yet to fully explore, at least not until today. But before I go into that, let me try to, to put this story in its proper context. You see, Jesus was incarnated here on earth. He came to earth and in his incarnation, he exposed two things. First of all, he exposed the tremendous goodness of our Heavenly Father. Uh, but secondly, he exposed the thoroughly evil nature of the devil who seeks to deceive us in so many different ways. Jesus came to set us free. But the devil, our enemy, has come to bring us into bondage. You might know what it is like to be thoroughly, or you might not know what it is like to be thoroughly bound by the devil. But you do, no doubt, know what it's like to be uh, filled with feelings of heaviness and depression. And I want you to know uh, this morning that Jesus came uh, to set us free from this heaviness. Jesus came free to set us came to set us free from any form of depression. He came to set us free uh, by not just simply salving it over, not simply wiping it to the side, but by casting it off of us permanently. Uh, but he does not leave us naked when he takes it away from us uh, but instead uh, he clothes us with something uh, yeah the, the heaviness uh, is cast off of us but he doesn't leave us naked so that it comes back on us at a later time but he according to what Isaiah 61 and verse 3 says uh, is that he clothes us with garments uh, of praise. Isaiah says uh, uh, that he came to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So that they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. It's another translation that says, that calls it a garment of praise. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what he has done. Uh, he doesn't leave us naked when he removes from us that spirit of heaviness, that spirit of depression. I don't know, is there anybody here that knows what it's like to, to feel? A, you might not call it depression. You might call it a heaviness. Uh, but that's a form of depression, and, 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 and everybody knows what it's like to feel that from time to time. But, but Jesus came to remove it from us and to do so permanently. So the triumphal entry into Jerusalem is far more than just Jesus coming in to the sacred city to claim his throne. When he came into Jerusalem, he was putting an emphatic exclamation point on the fact that he had come to set us free. 
And that, 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 that fact is not lost on his disciples who gathered along the side of the road who were shouting with uh, sounds of acclamation and throwing down their garments on the ground before him so that that foal of a donkey that carried him would not walk on the ground but would walk on those garlands, or would walk on those garments, would walk on those palm branches. And when they began to shout, the devil was exposed because the devil hates the sound of genuine praise. Yeah, you all missed that. The devil was exposed. You see, friends, uh, we've said that this year that we are armed and dangerous and, and that praise is always to be our weapon. But the truth of the matter is that we have yet to completely accept it and genuinely embrace it. Uh, we, 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 we are waiting for the church to be full, for a sound to be full, but the sound is in our mouth. And the fact that we have yet to release that sound is evidence of the fact that we have yet to fully understand its impact and its effectiveness. Uh, what are you talking about, Bishop? See, when you begin to look at praise, and remember the story, what happened in the story was that when the children in that one text in Matthew began to shout, and, and when the disciples in that other passage in Luke began to shout, uh, that the Pharisees, the scribes, the priests, they objected vociferously. They objected loudly. They, they came to Jesus and they complained. Do you see what is happening? Why? Because uh, uh, an emphatic uh, uh, praise of Jesus will always expose the devil. And here's why. Because praise, number one, will repel the devil. Praise repels the devil. Yeah, look, look at Psalm 22 and verse 3. Yet you are holy, you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. We've looked at this text before. That Hebrew word there is yeshev. That means literally that God sits down in your praise. So when you give God your praise, you now have the undivided attention of a holy God. Amen. You have the undivided attention of God who comes and plants himself in the midst of your praise. And when God plants himself in the middle of your praise, that's a place that the enemy cannot remain because your genuine praise repels the enemy. Well, maybe that's not enough for you. Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. I know the print is small, but, but I'll read it to you. In unison, when the trumpeters and the singers were to make themselves heard with one voice to praise and to glorify the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice, accompanied by trumpets and cymbals and instruments of, of praise, and when they praised the Lord, saying, He indeed is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting, then the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud. Verse 14 says, So that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house. When did the glory of the Lord fill the house? The glory of the Lord filled the house when they began to praise God and the instruments were accompanied by their praise. It, it didn't just fill the house because it was Sunday. It didn't just fill the house because, uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the worshipers had gathered. I know the text says that wherever there are two or three gathered in his name, that he's there in the midst of them. Yes, he's there, but his glory doesn't fill the house. The cloud doesn't fill the house until there's genuine praise in the house. And when there's genuine praise in the house and when the glory of God shows up, the devil cannot stay in that same place. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's not big enough for the devil and God. And so your praise repels the devil. You see, understand this. Get this. Get this image for a moment. When praise and worship begin, 
the devil and his minions. Yeah, you think you're not doing anything, but understand that when you are giving genuine praise, uh, somebody say genuine praise, uh, authentic praise, effective praise, the devil and his minions, what they see, uh, Wallace, are millions of flames of fire from heaven that burn them. My God. Uh, so when your praise goes up, uh, they, they, they flee because they can't stand the burning. Yeah, but, yeah, when, when you praise, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, not not only do they they see and feel the flames of fire, but they hear a sound that sounds like millions of hammers, invisible hammers that are hitting their heads, and they must flee because they cannot stand the mental torture. Y'all missing this. See, see, you don't think your praise is doing something. My God, when you encounter your enemy wherever you are, you might not be in a place where you can audibly give him the praise. Hallelujah. But you can give him a praise in your spirit. You can give him your praise in your body posture. You can give him, my God, I remember the old songwriter said that when I can't say a word, I'll just wave my hand. You can offer him genuine praise. And the devil can't stand it at that time I want you to catch that image of millions of flames of fire that just burned him I catch that image of millions of hammers that are hitting him in the head and he cannot stand that have any of you ever endured mental torture uh, yeah when, when you're in a place where you feel tortured where the sound feels tortured all you want to do is get out of there as quickly as you can so your praise somebody say my praise your praise repels the devil. And second of all, second of all, second of all, we have not yet fully embraced it because we don't fully understand its impact and effectiveness. And when it's effective, praise doesn't simply repel the devil, but praise, get this, praise is how God shuts the mouth of the devil. Y'all hear, hear me. Praise is how God silences your enemy. Come on, somebody. Pr praise is how, okay, let me give you a Bible. Matthew chapter 21, verses 15 and 16. But when the chief priest and the scribe saw the wonderful things that Jesus had done and the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They became indignant. Verse 16. Uh, but he said to them, do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. You have you ever read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise for yourself. What's that a reference to? Look at Psalm chapter, uh, Psalm 8, not chapter, Psalm 8. Don't you all do that. I, that drives me nuts. It's not chapters, they're Psalms. Psalm 8, verse 2. This is what Jesus is quoting. From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful cease. See, you might wonder, why didn't Jesus quote the whole verse? He didn't have to quote the whole verse. All he was doing was referencing the verse because the priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, they were familiar with the verse. Remember, they had learned it thoroughly. He didn't have to quote it. He was simply reminding them of what they were supposed to already know. He was reminding them back. It's sort of like if I went to you and you're going through something and the enemy's attacking you and I look at you and I, here, I'll try. Uh, do, have you not read uh, that uh, no weapon 
formed against you shall see see you you know it so i don't have to quote the whole thing because when i point you to it at the whole verse are y'all hearing me so he didn't have to quote the whole thing because they would have known it you see it's through our praise that the enemy is silenced and must flee so the moment jesus looked at these who were complaining they had to shut up Y'all miss this. I said, praise is how God shuts the mouth of the devil. Uh, see, see, they, they themselves were not the devil, but they were being utilized by the devil. And, and the devil was speaking through them. Uh, much in the same way, when, when Peter was trying to prevent Jesus from doing what he had been born to do, and Jesus looked at him and said, get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't saying that Peter was the devil but that the devil was operating through him at that particular moment. And there are times when you have to understand it's not going to be your wisdom. It's not going to be your knowledge. It's not going to be your demeanor uh, yeah, that we like to use in certain circumstances. But if you're a child of the king, that is your praise that will shut the mouth of the devils. Yeah, yeah. Now look at 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 23. So it came about... Whenever the evil spirit from God came to Saul, y'all remember this? King Saul would get an evil spirit upon him, and, and David would take the harp and play it with his hand, and Saul would be refreshed and be welled, and the evil spirit <laughs> would depart from him. Now listen, David wasn't playing rhythm and blues. Come on, somebody. David wasn't playing uh, uh, soft jazz. David... The, uh, yeah, David, the sweet singer of Israel. If you want to know what David sang, go and read the Psalms of David. Uh, I say it that way because not every Psalm was written by David. But David wrote Psalms. These are literally songs. And this is what David was singing. Don't you think for a moment that David waited until he became king to sit down and write these songs. These, this was a part of, of David his entire life. It was in him. I can imagine that David, while he was out there in the fields, with the shepherds as a boy that while he was sitting there watching over the flocks he was singing to them so he was singing at, uh, he had a reputation because uh, Dave, uh, Saul heard about David Saul heard about his ability on the harp and he brought him to the palace uh, not just because he had destroyed Goliath but brought him to the palace because he had this ability and whenever Saul you might think uh, evil spirit, Saul 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 had such an evil spirit. I remember he got jealous of David and he threw a javelin at David and it lodged itself in the wall. If David hadn't uh, ducked and bobbed and weaved, he would have been dead. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's the kind of spirit that would come upon him. But whenever David would begin to sing the songs of Zion. Saul would get calm, cool, and collected. Why? Because that evil spirit that was upon him left. You see, if you're tired of the enemy and his deception ringing constantly in your ear, if you're tired of the enemy and his deception constantly creating havoc and chaos in your house and in your home and in your relationships and with your children and on your, if you're tired of the enemy and his deception constantly ringing in your ear, give God the praise. Maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe the reason there's no peace in your home is because you're not giving him praise. Maybe the reason that, 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 that the home of a believer or your life or your ministry or your job or your relationship, that you find that there is no peace, it's because you have yet to take seriously what it means to praise God. Uh, listen to me, saints of God. I'm not arguing for a particular type of praise because everybody doesn't praise him the same way. 
Come on, somebody. And I need for you to broaden your understanding of what it means to praise God because praise is not just when the organ or the keyboard or the drums are playing your particular rhythm that you like to shout on. Praise is when you offer God what is due his name when there's nobody around. Praise is when you're sitting in your car and you're driving to work and you know you're facing something when you get there and you've been dreading it all weekend long and it's welled up in the pit of your belly and you're feeling the anxiety but on your way the radio's not playing come on somebody your favorite song is not in the, in the air but it's in your spirit and in your spirit you begin to sing it and you begin to worship God while you're sitting there at your computer while you're sitting there uh, in your car wherever you are you are offering him praise and when you do it something happens happens on the inside that enemy that's been afflicting you that enemy that's been talking junk to you that enemy that's been trying to stop you suddenly has to back up off of you and begin to flee why because your praise is how God not you but your praise is how God shuts the mouth of your enemies are y'all here you see, you see, the reason why we we are we are cool, calm, and collected when we come, it, it doesn't matter. Listen, you ought to be blowing this place up with your praise, regardless of who is or who is not here. Come on, somebody. You you ought to be blowing that up so much so that, that people are, who are down on a Sunday morning in the salons hear a ruckus going on up here and, and, and are are drawn to this space because they just want to see what in the world is going on. I'm talking about a genuine praise. I'm not talking about a manufactured praise just to be making noise. If that's all it is, you might as well just be banging on a cymbal. It's not doing anything at all. But see, a genuine praise, an effective praise, it has impact. Amen. Amen. So it repels the devil. It's how God shuts the mouth of the devil. But here's the third thing that you need to understand is that your praise must be genuine. It must be genuine. I don't have time to go back through this entire text, but I want to point you to Exodus chapter 32. In Exodus chapter 32 is when Moses, according to the Israelites, has spent too much time up on the mountain. And they begin to wonder, has Moses died on the mountain? And they come to his brother Aaron, and they ask Aaron, make for us a God. And Aaron, which is why Aaron was not much more than a mouthpiece for Moses. Uh, Aaron, rather than standing up for the right, he tells the people, bring me your gold. And he, they bring him the gold and he melts it down and he fashions it, Mother Mitchell, into a golden calf. And he says, behold your God. Behold your God. Uh, now, now, when Aaron tells the story, when Moses comes and, and Mother Hikes wants to know, Aaron, what in the world happened here? Aaron tells the story a different way. Aaron, uh, William, he says, the people brought me their gold. I threw it in the fire and out jumped this calf. But while they were on the mountain, Joshua, who was there with Moses, he heard something. Now, when Joshua heard the sound of the people as they shouted, what were they doing? As they did what? Joshua heard the sound of the people as they did what? I can't hear you. As they shouted. They were making a noise, weren't they? He said to Moses, there is a sound of war in the camp. Now, Lady Sibyl, I could have written a whole message just on that sentence. There is a sound of war. Y'all not hearing this. Gideon, when he 
went into battle and God whittled his forces down to 300. They broke pots and they shouted and the enemy fainted because the sound to them sounded like a massive army coming against them. Now, I want you to get this. Don't, don't, don't flip yet. Get this. He, Joshua said there's, the, uh, there's a sound of war in the camp. We talk about spiritual warfare. Come on, somebody. And when we talk about spiritual warfare, we think we're only always talking about praying. But we're, warfare is accompanied by a sound. You don't have a war in silence. Why aren't y'all going to help me? I, we, we, we've, we've been glued to the television watching what is happening in Ukraine. And, and, and the commentators come on and they say that we've heard uh, explosions all night long. And we've heard sirens going off all night long. Why? Because war is accompanied by a sound. Amen. So when our praise goes up, get this, I, I'm, I'm going to flip here for a moment. When our praise goes up, people who hear us, Lady Sybil, ought to hear a sound of war. But now look at verse 18. He said, there's a sound of war in the camp, but he said, <laughs> but he said, it's not the sound of the cry of triumph. Nor is it the sound of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing I hear. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You see, our praise is a sound, but it should carry the sound of triumph. It should carry the sound of defeat of our, not your defeat, but defeat of your enemies. Uh, okay, let, let's back up. Let's back up for a moment. Let's back. You, you remember when you were in school and 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 your your team, whichever sport it was that you followed, they had a big game. Uh, well, you know what I'm talking about because you were a coach. You had a big game against a team that nobody gave you a chance to defeat. But you went in there and defeated them. And what happened? The sound at the end of defeat, at at, at the end of the game, was a sound of triumph. <laughs> And a sound of defeat, not your defeat, but the defeat of the other team. It's a different kind of sound. The folks who are defeated, they ain't making a sound. They're weeping and crying and sighing. And, and, and when it comes to war, they're dying. <laughs> Joshua said, That's not, there's a sound of war in the camp, but it's not the sound of triumph. It's not the sound of defeat of our enemies. It's the sound of singing. Why were they singing? Because without triumph and without the sound of defeat of your enemies, it's empty. Your praise is empty. We've talked about folks that shout and dance, but they're shouting and dancing not because of triumph over their enemies, but because they're in love with shouting and dancing. And it's empty. But empty shouts, you see, they don't come from a holy life. Empty shouts don't come from a, sin a sincere heart. Empty shouts don't come uh, and have any power attached to it. But here's the thing. If your praise comes from a heart that's really committed to God, it has power in it. Let's go back to Exodus 32. Uh, the Israelites worshiped the golden calf. And get this. They called the golden calf Jehovah. That's our God's name. But they called the golden calf Jehovah. And they shouted to it so loud that Moses and Joshua heard it up the mountain. But it was not real praise. It was empty and hollow because there was immorality in the midst of it. 
And that same thing happens today. Folk who are shouting, but they have no victory. Folk who are praising God, uh, but rather than defeating their enemies, their enemy has defeated them. Come on, somebody. But they want to give the semblance of victory. They, they want to make it look like they have victory. They want people to notice how effective they are in their praise simply because they've learned how to roll hallelujah off their lips with the right inflection or, or they've learned how to have such a cute step. Uh, yeah. see, see, it happens today. And people can and do give God praise with a loud voice, but it has no power in it because they themselves are still caught in immorality. Y'all don't want to help me in here. But when your praise is genuine, somebody say when it's genuine, you can be absolutely certain that your praise will drive the enemy out. Amen. When, when your praise is genuine, genuine uh -huh. yeah, yeah see 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 the enemy detects insincerity the enemy sees insincerity as weakness because there's no power in it C come here book of acts come here seven sons of Sceva. Uh, they they thought that they could profit uh, on driving the devil out of those who were possessed of the devil uh, simply by invoking uh, the name of the God whom Paul <laughs> talks about. And they named other people. But the problem was it was insincere because there was immorality in it. The immorality was that they themselves had no personal relationship with God. And because they had no personal relationship, uh, because they were in the midst of immorality, there was no power in their praise. And that devil that was in the man that they were trying to drive it out of jumped upon them and said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? And that devil jumped on not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven Seven, seven grown men and gave them such a beating, Wallace, you got to get a picture of this, gave them such a beating that they went running down the road naked and bleeding. Now that's a whooping. Not a whipping, that's a whooping. Why? Because they were messing with something, but they had no power. My God. See, see when your praise is genuine, there's power in your praise. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah, yeah. See, 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 that's what happened on this day. When Jesus came riding into Jerusalem and the, the, the disciples began to praise him. When Jesus showed up and the children began to praise him, the Pharisees were offended. Yeah, they were offended because of the praise of children. Uh, yeah, they were offended because of the praise of the disciples. Uh, they were offended because they didn't like loud noise. The, the, you see, they believed the only way to praise God was in silence. The only way to praise God was quietly and, and seriously as though a funeral were being held. But I want to dispute even that because if it's a funeral of a believer, even it ought not to be quiet because we don't grieve as those who have no hope. Amen. There ought to be the sound of praise, not because we're happy that they are gone, but because we're overjoyed by the fact that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We can rejoice over the fact that Though we're sorry that they are gone and we wish that we still had them with us, that they beat us into the presence of Jesus and they are rejoicing with him and the saints above. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, there's nothing wrong. Get this. I don't want you to miss this. Uh, Barbara, there's nothing wrong with silence. Yeah, as the preacher wrote, there's a time and a season for everything under heaven. Uh, there's nothing wrong with silence. There's a time to be quiet. Uh, sometimes you've got to get quiet in order for you to hear God speaking 
to you. So I believe that there's a time to praise God in silence. But there is also praise that is acceptable to God that comes forth with shouts of joy. Yeah, one translation of Psalm 100 says it this way in the very first verse. Uh, the NASB says, shout joyfully unto the Lord. But another verse says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful, make, make a, in, in other words, uh, you, you have to determine that this is a noise, a joyful noise that I'm going to make unto, I may not be able to qualify for the praise team. I may not be able to qualify for the choir, but I know how to make a joyful noise. Uh, yeah, yeah, you might not like what you hear, but my God is celebrating because the fact that I am joyfully shouting unto him, I'm making a noise and that noise noise drives the devil out yeah see we worship God with shouts of joy shouts of praise but we also worship in solemn praise it's not always just one or the other it's both and but here in our text it, the text that we read to you at the very beginning it was proper for the children and Christ's disciples to get excited and to praise God for here was their coming king who was coming to set them free from the bondage. Yeah, see, what, what we miss sometimes is that Jesus had to die so that we could be set free. Jesus had to die so that he, when he got up from the grave, he would get up with all power in his power power to deliver us from evil power to set us free from sickness power to uh, uh, encourage us power to make us victorious you see you got to understand this before jesus was incarnated here on earth uh, jesus didn't just show up uh, jesus himself says i and the father are what we're one so that means that jesus was from the beginning uh, yeah in the beginning it says let us make man in our image after our likeness he the father and the spirit were there right from the very beginning so if jesus was there with the father right from the very beginning that means that his entire existence before he was incarnated here on earth that he get this he was surrounded by countless numbers of angels who were praising god i don't want you to miss this jesus came from an environment that was filled with praise Jesus came from an environment that the devil had to flee from. Yeah, I know the devil was cast out of a, out of heaven, and he was cast out of a, out of heaven because he didn't want to just be like God. He wanted to be God, and he was cast out of heaven. Don't miss this. His job was to offer praise unto the high king of heaven. His whole body was an instrument that when the wind blew through it, it played and music and made melody unto the Lord. But when he was cast out of heaven, he could no longer offer that praise and you know what he doesn't want you to offer that praise because he understands that praise is powerful he understands that praise is effective so what he does is that he tries to stop your praise see look at this he's he is as perfectly comfortable Jesus that is because it came from an environment of praise he is as perfectly comfortable with our praise as our enemy is uncomfortable with our praise he is not offended by our praise but our enemy is offended by it in fact our enemy is so uncomfortable and he is so offended that he still tries to stop our praise and he has succeeded in at least two ways. First of all, he'll come and stop the praise altogether. We don't have a full band, so we can't praise God. Our organ is broken, so we can't praise God. We don't have anything but piped music, so we can't. That's a devil that is coming in our midst to stop our praise let me tell you something long before there were instruments we had our hands and our feet long before there was a amplification we had our mouths and our voices and so he first comes to stop the praise altogether 
That's what he's done in many homes and many churches and many lives. He stopped the praise to the point that there are no shouts of praise at all. But he's secondarily, if he doesn't succeed in stopping the praise, he has a second technique, Jamie. And that is where the people are praising God, he makes them insincere. Yeah, people that just praise God for the sake of praising, that means they will say it with their mouths, but it's not true with their hearts and their lives. And so either by stopping the praise or making it insincere, he still succeeds. The devil hates our praise because he knows it causes him to lose his power in our lives. He hates our praise because he knows it causes him to lose power in our homes and in our relationships, in our jobs, and yes, in our church. So today, this Palm Sunday, we ought to see the triumphal entry differently. Yeah, see it as pointing us to the wonderfully important key that God has gifted us to open doors here on earth. There are doors that are yet closed for you. Try praising God. Pray, but not, not only praise God for what he's doing right now, praise God for what he's already done. And you know what else? Begin to praise him for what he is yet to do. Uh, give him praise on account. Uh, yeah, just, 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 just store up your praise even though you have yet to receive it. The Bible says that we pray for those things that are not as though they already are. I want to encourage you to praise for those things that are not as though they already are. See the triumphal entry differently see it pointing us to the gifting that God has to open doors here on earth yes your enemy my enemy our enemy hates our praise he hates our worship but this year we don't need our hoodies to tell it but thank God we've got them thank God we've got them that we are armed we are armed and dangerous. And praise is our weapon. So when I wave my palm branch, I let the devil know, nothing you try shall succeed. No weapon that you seek to form against me shall be able to prosper. And when people rise up to call me everything but a child of God, ha, I will be the one to condemn it. I wave my palm branches and I let the devil know that praise is my weapon. When I offer him praise, the devil's got to get up and get to stepping. Amen. Get out of my situation. Get out of my circumstances. See, 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 you don't hear anything else in that story of the triumphal entry from the moment Jesus uh, responds to them when they say tell your disciples to be quiet and he says but if these would hold their peace the rocks and the trees will cry out this is not about making noise this is about offering and praise God you're worthy of my praise things might not be as good as they could be or I want them to be but God you're worthy of my praise for you have done great and wonderful things for me whereof I am exceedingly glad God I bless you God I praise you hallelujah glory to God I might be suffering right now but suffering produces patience which produces character which produces hope and hope does not disappoint us I might be going through a situation right now, but I praise you because it's just temporary. God, I thank you that you're bringing me out of this. I thank you that you're turning this around. I bless your name. People are looking at you and wondering, knowing your situation, how can you be so pleasant? How can you have still a smile on your face? How can you still greet me the way you greet me every day when I see you? But they don't know what you know. They don't know the God you know. They don't know the God that's worthy of your praise. 
Let me encourage somebody today. Don't let the devil get you down. Remember the songwriter said, when troubles and trials come your way, hold your head up high and say, hallelujah. Anyhow, Hosanna to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is a sound. There is a sound that will drive the devil out. Is there anybody in here who can offer God that sound right now? Come on, don't let him steal your praise. Huh? Glory, 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 glory. You, you see, you see, I, I, I don't believe that you ought to be obnoxious with your praise. But unless you're offending somebody, you're not doing anything. Because when you praise him, you expose the devil. The Pharisees, the scribes, the priests, they were exposed for who they really are. Officials in the synagogue, but devils. Oh, I'm, I'm not proof texting. Jesus looked at him and said what? You brood of vipers. Jesus looked at him and called them whitewashed tombs. They looked good on the outside. But inside they're filled with death, decay, and more. My praise. Somebody say my praise. Will drive the devil out. Stand to your feet. I'm finished. Hallelujah. Did that minister to anybody? Amen. I don't know about you, but I will never look at the story of the triumphal entry quite the same way again. It's so much more than how we've looked at it in the past. As your pastor and as your bishop, this is what I want to encourage you to do. I want to make, I want you to make up your mind that when you come to worship, when you come to Bible study in your personal life, that you're going to kick up your praise. Anybody ever watch those cooking shows? You ever watch the cooking shows? Sometimes the cook says, he said, this is real good, but let's, let's crank it up a notch. And so they throw some more spice in there, things of that nature. You're doing well in your praise, but how many of you know you can do better? Don't be deceived by the lie of the enemy that comes along to make you say, but you know, that's, I'm just like that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a very enthusiastic person. I bet you'd be enthusiastic if somebody gave you a big old check. Aisha, am I telling the truth? You'd be jumping up and down and running, carrying on. But what did Jesus do for you? Hallelujah. He's worthy of all of our praise. How many of you know I'm telling right? Amen. Glory to God. If I was talking to you, if this was beneficial and helpful to you, just wave your hand to me. Hallelujah. I, I want to pray for you, and I want you to make a commitment today. My praise is going to go higher. I'm going to shout higher. My praise is going to be more effective. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can I pray with you for a moment? So, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We bless you right now for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for talking to us today. Lord, forgive us for letting the rocks and trees cry out in our place. But today we take our praise back. Lord, we place our praise in our mouths, in our belly. Lord, we're not going to wait on situations and circumstances to change to where we think this is a good, better place to praise you. But Lord, in the hard times, we'll praise you. In the stressful times, we'll praise you. When we're in pain, we'll praise you. Lord, when we're broke, we'll praise you. Lord, when we're hungry, we'll praise you. 
Lord, when our relationships are broken asunder, we'll praise you. Lord, we'll praise you in the morning. We'll praise you in the evening. We'll praise you at the noonday. We'll praise you with everything we have in us. We'll offer you praise because you're worthy to receive it. Receive our praise now, O oh God. Not just for what you're doing right now. Not just for what you did in these few moments where we received your word. But we thank you right now. We praise your name right now for what we believe you're getting ready to do. God, we praise your name for what we believe you're going to do for us and in us and through us during this week of prayer and fasting. As we turn down our plates and we bow before you. We believe, oh God, that change and transformation is coming in our situation because of what we are about to embark on. And we bless your name right now in advance. Hallelujah. Open your eyes. Now, devil, we call you by name. We decree and we declare that your deceptive ways in our lives are finished. You've been successful in the past, but your time is up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we command you, pick up your weapons and flee. Loose, let go, release the people of God right now. Hallelujah. Loose our tongues. Loose our hands. Loose our feet. For we are praise instruments of our God. And Lord, as we offer you praise, Lord, as we offer you praise, Lord, we know you're here already, but as we offer your praise, let the manifestation of your glory fill this house. Lord, let it fill us so much so that we cannot move because of your glory. Hallelujah. Because of your glory. And we do bless you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and bless him right now. Come on. Come on, clap your hands and bless him right now. Come on, clap your hands and bless him right now. Come on, this is practice session right now. Come on, practice. Practice blessing him right now. Come on. Come on. Practice right now. Hallelujah. This is rehearsal time. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, somebody rear. Throw your head back and cry hallelujah. Throw your head back and cry hosanna. Come on. He's worthy of your praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. If you haven't gotten a breakthrough yet, it might be coming right now. Come on, don't stop. Just bless his name. Bless. You at home, come on. Get up out of that chair. Bless his name. Get up out of that bed. Bless his name. Come on, start running around that kitchen. Run around that living room. Praise his name. He's worthy. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give him 60 more seconds. Give, give him 60 more seconds. Come on. Come on, come on, saints of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He's done great things. He's getting ready to do better things. He's taking you to a better place. He's taking you in a higher place. Come on, saints of God. Glorify the Lord. Magnify his name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continuously be in my mouth. Glory to God. My soul doth magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. That ought to be your posture. That ought to be your sound. Some of you have been waiting for the Lord to break through in your situation for a long time. I want to say to somebody right now that if you give yourself to praising him the breakthrough for which you have been waiting it shall evidence itself it shall appear how many of you believe that I said how many of you believe it glory to God glory to God amen bless God bless God listen saints of God I thank you so much for being here our service is at an end those of you who are watching I want you to know that none of this will make any sense to you if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. Jesus makes all the difference in your world. He is still 
the answer for our world today. Above him, there is no other because Jesus is the way. How many know that to be true today? So we bless his name and we encourage you to find him. Amen. Because he's seeking after you. Let him find you today. Amen. Give your life to him. You'll never regret it. And after you give your life to him, get yourself into a good Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-teaching church. We invite you to come be with us if you're able. If you're in the area, we're located at 2925 East Independence Boulevard in the Jones Building on the second floor. We have plenty of room for you. Come and be with us. Be taught the Word of God. See the Word of God modeled in our lives so that it can be on display in yours. And we thank God for you in advance. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in with us, those who have been watching. If you have prayer concerns or requests, please do not hesitate to email them to us. You can reach us at kfcc at bellsouth.net or at admin at kingdomfellows.org. That's kfcc at bellsouth.net or admin at kingdomfellows.org. We look forward to hearing from you. Sunday coming is Easter. We want to invite you to come be with us. Before we get to Sunday, we'll be back on Wednesday night, continuing in our study in the book of James at 7 p.m. We invite you to come join us. Tune in if you're not able to get to us, and we will look to see you or at least see you on the live stream at that time. God bless you. Go in peace. The Lord go with you. The Lord cover you and protect you. The Lord surround you with his presence and with his power. May you be blessed in your going and in your coming. You're lying down and you're rising up again. May your bread basket be blessed. May your house be blessed. May your job be blessed. May your children be blessed. May your relationships be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hug somebody if you feel comfortable doing so or bump fists or bump elbows or something. Let them know I love you and there's not a thing you can do about it. And we'll see you next time. This is Bishop Jim Logan saying again, thank you and good